This video is focused on SnowSight, which is Snowflake's data visualization in the new web UI. This is a hands-on video where you can code right along with me, but even if you aren't ready to get hands-on yet, there is still a great deal you can learn about SnowSight from the many examples in this video. In this video, we're going to create a dashboard with four different queries from which we will create six different tiles. We'll then create some charts to display on our dashboard. One thing to note is that SnowSight is in preview right now, so there are some limitations, such as there are only five different chart types you can create. After we create our dashboard, we'll learn how to share the dashboard with others, and we'll also see how we can download a CSV file of query results. So let's get started. This is the dashboard we're going to create today. It is a dashboard created to focus on cash flow. The left side of the dashboard has information about the count balances from U.S. customers, which totaled $2.69 billion. And the right side of the dashboard shows information about outstanding U.S. orders that have not yet been shipped or invoiced, which total $439 billion. Given the large dollar amounts, you can see why a dashboard with visualizations and the ability, ability to drill down in the table to get more details would be incredibly valuable. There are four different queries we're going to use to create the dashboard, and I've included them for you up front. This is the first query, and it will give you the U.S. customer account balances due. You'll use this query for a scorecard visualization and for the table that appears on the dashboard. This next query is created so we can take a look at the customer account balances by market segment in the form of a bar chart. Because SnowSight can't provide a bar chart for more than 10,000 records at this time, we've limited the number of rows returned to 10,000. And this query is used to get us the total outstanding U.S. orders not yet shipped, and we'll use it to create a scorecard visual. We'll use this last SQL query to get us the top 20 outstanding U.S. orders not yet shipped, and we'll include the order priority, such as urgent, high, or low, in our visuals to give us important additional information. To get started, you'll need to log into Snowflake and make sure you have changed your role to account admin. The first step is that you'll want to click on the Preview App button in the top right-hand corner. Then click on the Enable Worksheets and Dashboards button. It is good practice to create your SQL queries in your worksheets prior to using them in a dashboard, and if so, you can import the worksheets. However, we're not going to do that today. We're going to use the SQL queries I already generated. So on the left-hand side, we'll click on Dashboard. Be sure to click on the plus dashboard and give the new dashboard a name. Afterward, click on Create Dashboard button. Now first we'll create a new tile. Tiles are each of the pieces of data visualizations or result sets that can be added to a dashboard. To create your first new tile, you can either click on the plus new tile in the middle of the screen, or in the top left, click on the plus and then new tile from worksheet. Clicking either one will give you the screen that you see to the right. Next, we're preparing to write a query that will return the data we'll be using for the tile. So we need to select the database we intend on using. Everyone has access to Snowflake sample data, so we'll select that database to use. Click on the Schema button, which brings up a nice interface. We can work with this interface to preview our work and to pin different tables. On the right hand side, click on each of the tables you'd like to work with so they can be pinned. As you click on each one, a pen appears next to it and the table appears in the interface to the left. For any of the tables, you can click on preview to see a preview of the data in the table. Input your first query and then hit the run button in the top right corner of the screen to run the query. Next, be sure to save the query name. I save this query as total U.S. customer account balances due. It is important to note that the query name will be the tile name on the dashboard. You'll notice that the query results return 1,000 rows on the screen, which you can scroll through, and some additional details are available on the right side of the screen. You'll notice that, that there were 600,000 records included in the results that were returned. 
On the left hand side of the screen, click on account balance. You'll see information such as the range of the account balances and the sum. When you're done reviewing, click on clear selection. Next, underneath market segment, click on plus two more. When you're done reviewing, click on clear select. One really cool feature that I like is that you can download a CSV of the query results. To the left of the arrow, there is also a search function where you can search through the query results. Next, we're going to create a visual for our dashboard. Click on the chart button and you'll notice that there are too many data points for a line or a bar chart. If you remember, our results returned 600,000 rows. However, we can still create a scorecard and that is exactly what we want to create. On the right side of the screen, click on the drop down arrow for the chart type and select scorecard. Click on return to Joyce's dashboard or whatever you called your dashboard. On the dashboard, you will now see the scorecard for total U.S. customer account balances. On the top right hand corner in the drop down, click on edit query, which will take you back to the worksheets. We're going to duplicate the query because we want to use it to include a table on the dashboard. Underneath the drop down menu, click on duplicate, then edit the name of the towel to remove to remove the beginning part that says copy of. Next, you will click on return to dashboard. Then click on the plus at the top left, which will show you a list of tiles, both those that are shown on the dashboard and those that are not on the dashboard. Drag the bottom tile, the one you just created, onto the dashboard. Now we want to create a new tile using a new SQL query. To do that, Click on the plus in the top left of the screen and then click on new tile from worksheet. Input the SQL query and run. Be sure to save the query name. Click on the chart button and then select bar chart type on the right. Fill in the bar chart details as shown here in step three. And finally, click on return to dashboard. This is what your Snowflake dashboard should look like at this point if you've been following along. If you'd like, you can use the last two SQL queries provided to add the remaining three tiles and then rearrange on the dashboard by dragging the tiles however you want. This is the dashboard that I created from the four SQL queries, but you can experiment and create your own dashboard. Once you're satisfied with your dashboard, you can share your dashboard with others if you'd like. Just click on the share button on the top right of the screen and then invite users. Just a couple of important notes. You can change the query results underneath your charts. Um, and as long as the columns in the chart remain in your result set, your chart will update automatically. However, if the column names change, your chart may break. The second important note is that dashboards can only include worksheets that you own. They can't include shared worksheets. And then lastly, deleting a tile from a dashboard deletes the underlying worksheet altogether, and that action cannot be undone. Hopefully the things we've walked through in this video have given you a little more appreciation for the new Snowflake SnowSight visualization tool. Thanks again for watching this video. Be sure to check out my other videos and please feel free to reach out to me on social media. Thanks so much.